With the release of 2013's Man of Steel, Warner Brothers Entertainment finally decided to try to launch a DC Cinematic Universe in order to compete with Marvel Studios. And, of course, it's Superman. The Man of Steel did make a lot of money, but it was not well received and most people hate it. And the same can be said for Batman vs Superman, which is by some considered to be worse than Green Lantern, which is considered by many to be the worst superhero movie of the modern era. The DC Cinematic Universe has been a huge letdown, with only one movie from it being considered good, and that being Wonder Woman. And even Wonder Woman, while it's good, still doesn't even touch some of the best Marvel movies in terms of quality. Even the name, the DC Cinematic Universe, isn't even a real name. It wasn't even given a name until 2018 San Diego Comic Con, where Warner Brothers branded it the world of DC. And I honestly, personally believe that the DC Cinematic Universe, the world of DC, is broken. So today, we are going to try to fix the DC Cinematic Universe. So before even making any more movie, we need to just do a complete reboot. And I know some people are going to point to Wonder Woman and say we shouldn't get rid of that, but this is my argument to that. Wonder Woman was a fantastic movie, but if you reboot and start from scratch again and get rid of all those movies, Wonder Woman, Suicide Squad, Batman vs Superman, Man of Steel, and just start over, then you can make 10 more great Wonder Woman movies and movies with Wonder Woman in them in the new universe you're going to establish. The first movie I would make, I think, should be obvious. Because unlike Marvel, who did not have some of their premier characters at the time that they launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe, DC has everything, so they might as well start with their number one character. They're going to start with a Superman movie. First of all, this would not be an origin movie, but we would do the origin because there's so many different versions of the Superman origin that we would just want to clarify what we're doing, but it would be the very basic origin. No nonsense with Zod or anything like that. No, very simple. Krypton is going to blow up, so you just immediately open the film with Superman Parent putting him in the rocket. He takes off. Within the first 15 seconds of the movie, he has already crash landed on Earth and been adopted by the Kent. And then we just do a very quick, maybe one minute or less, montage of Superman growing up. In fact, the montage could end with him putting on the costume for the first time, flying into the camera, you know, you zoom in on the S, and then you cut to the title card, and then you just cut to him arriving in like a cab in Metropolis. And then I'm putting in a rule. No evil Kryptonian nonsense. We've done Zod and all of this stuff so many times. No, instead, the only thing you're allowed to do with the origin in terms of bringing something back as a villain is Brainiac. If you want to do a version of the origin that involved Brainiac being created on Krypton, fine, you can do that, but it can't have to do with the planet blowing up. That whole thing is going to be left alone. We're not touching that anymore. Secondly, no crazy villain for the Superman movie. No super powerful being that Superman has to fight. None of that. Give him a basic villain, like maybe somebody like Toy Man or Metallo. The villain really doesn't matter because the point of the movie would not be to have a cool fight or make a ton of blockbuster special effects. No, the point of the movie would be to establish Superman as a person and a character to the audience. Superman would not question whether or not he should save people, how he should use his abilities. He wouldn't be sad and depressed. No, he would be happy. He would help kittens out of trees. You could adapt the scene from All-Star Superman where he talks to that girl out of suicide. You could literally adapt that panel for panel. Maybe have some stuff where he hangs out with little kids and like take pictures with them and play with them. You could do a lot with this character, but all you need to do is make him fun and hopeful. Make it that is what Superman is. He's not dark brooding and using questionable methods. No, that's Batman. That's what Batman does. Also, Superman and Lois Lane are not allowed to get together. 
Superman will work in the Daily Planet. He will be Clark Kent. You can have that romance because that romance is a key part of the character. But they can't get together in the first movie. No, because there are going to be a lot of Superman movies in this universe. And you can make that be a slow thing that happens throughout the movie. Kind of like the Tony Stark Pepper Pop relationship in the MCU that they've been building for like a decade. We're taking our time with this movie. And in this Superman movie, there would not be any blatant references to other characters. Nothing like Superman looked at a newspaper and you have pictures of the Flash, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and all these characters. None of that Batman versus Superman nonsense. Now what you're going to do in this movie, is you'll just have a brief, brief mention of Gotham. You won't even allude to Batman, you just mentioned that crime in Gotham is really, really bad. However, something Superman would do in the movie is reveal who he is to the world, not who he is like he Clark Kent, but that his name is Cal El Krypton, and how he arrived on Earth. And you would have people ask the question, is there other life in the universe? Then, for the post credit scene in the movie, you would have Wonder Woman arriving in America for the first time. Following the post credit scene in Superman, I would do a Wonder Woman movie. Now, it is very important to establish that I do think we need to do another origin movie for her. Simply because, one, I think I would go with the more classic origin of her being made from clay. Because at the end of the day, I think the origin of her being made from clay is much more classic and timeless than the new 52 origin of her being the daughter of Luke. I would also set it in the modern day, setting it almost immediately after the first appearance of Superman in Metropolis. And I think much like with the Superman movie, you just want to make Diana or Wonder Woman look really cool. You want to make her a really fun, likable character. I think Ares could be the villain again, I really think he could, because I honestly don't think Ares was very well used in the Wonder Woman movie. I think if you had them fight in a brightly lit area, and gave them both more comic accurate appearances, it would be really cool. I honestly think with Wonder Woman, I would just give it to a really good director, and have them make a good movie. Like, the Wonder Woman in the DC Cinematic Universe now, like the official one, is really good. So I would just try to do that again. The only thing I would really change about Wonder Woman in the movies is that I don't think her outfit is bright enough in the current movies. I think in the comics her outfit is very bright. She's supposed to be a lot like Superman, she's the bright, loving, kind character, much like Superman. And I think at this point, audiences of these movies are so used to the crazy costumes some of these superheroes wear. Like, look at Spider-Man in the MCU, look at how bright and colorful that is. I don't think anybody would be opposed to the classic Wonder Woman look. And Patty Jenkins kind of got it for the Wonder Woman movie, but she just didn't go all the way. I don't think she went bright enough with those colors. Also, I would establish that Wonder Woman Woman will kill people. I know they really like having characters to kill in these movies, but most of the characters don't do that. So if you have to have one character to kill people, which I know they'll want to do, just make it Wonder Woman. Make it the lady who grew up on an island of warriors who uses a sword to fight. Make it her. Also, while Wonder Woman doesn't like murder people viciously in the comics, her not killing people thing has also never been a major part of her character. Like, really, I think Wonder Woman is the simplest one, because with Wonder Woman, it's really just make a good movie about Wonder Woman and get a good actor. That's really all you need to do with her. In terms of setting up other stuff, is I would have a scene where Wonder Woman is talking to somebody on Themyscira. For some reason during the movie, she has to go back to Themyscira and she's talking to somebody. And one of them brings up, had you heard about anybody else in Man World that is interesting? And Wonder Woman would mention this nice guy that she heard about in Metropolis. But then she would also offhandedly mention that she heard about this guy in this one American city that has really bad methods that she doesn't like. She's of course referring to Batman. We don't say it's Batman and we don't mention Gotham because Wonder Woman not knowing what Gotham is makes sense because in the continuity she's only ever been to Man World one time and she's only been there for like a couple weeks. She would also say that she's only heard rumors about him and she's not even sure if he's real. Some people say he is, some people say he isn't. He's almost like a myth. The post credit thing would be a ton of criminals talking in a bar. 
They're just talking to each other and they're whispering about the bat and whether or not he's real. The rumors that they've heard. And then somebody walks over and he starts to laugh hysterically. He sits down and you can't make out anything about his appearance. All you hear are his voice and his insane laughter periodically. And he says, yes, he is real. Batman is real. And then the post credit scene ends. So for Flash and Aquaman, I'm going to be completely honest, I just think we need origin movies. These are not very well-known characters. I mean, people know who the Flash is from a TV show, but I do think giving the general, very general movie-going audience an introduction to the Flash to what an origin would be a good idea. And Aquaman? Aquaman, you just need to make a good movie that completely destroys the idea that Aquaman can just talk to fish. You need to establish that Aquaman is really cool and that he's not just some loser who talks to fish. And these are the two movies that I feel like would only really exist to introduce the audience to these characters. As you may have noticed, I'm not going into super specific details on what I want in these movies because I would want to give the director a lot of creative control this is just an overall broad plan that we would all follow to try to tell a tight story throughout all of these movies. But right now, we're still in the setup phase. We're still setting things up for the future, so we're not even in the parts of it where I really need to go into great detail yet. For the post credit scene in Flash, I would just say Flash should just set up Aquaman. How the post credit scene that teased Aquaman. Aquaman's post credit scene with Joe Green Lantern battling another enemy in space and getting shot at, and then cutting to blank. Throughout both movies, we would continue to tease the Gotham. We would still not mention Batman by name, we would tease the, a man in Gotham doing things, and we would tease the city being a really bad place. Leading into the part of all of this that I'm most excited to talk about, Batman. First of all, just like with Superman, we're not doing an origin, but in this case, we're not even doing a montage. We're not doing it at all. Alfred can offhandedly mention the death of the Wayne, but we're not doing that. Anyone seeing a Batman movie at this point will know the origin of Batman. Also, unlike characters like Wonder Woman and Superman, Batman's origin is pretty much never changing. Like, the killer has changed a few times in the comments, like, it's been a name with nobody, it's been the Joker in some universes. But it's also very typically just the man known as Joe Chill. And if the origin is not mentioned at all, people are just going to assume you're going with the classic Joe Chill origin. We don't need training montages and stories about how he became- we don't need that. Let's just jump right in to Batman. But we're also not doing that Batman vs. Superman nonsense where Batman had been active for like 20 years. No, instead we're going to say Batman had been active for about a year and a half. He's found his footing, he's been doing it for about a year, he has a good relationship with the Gotham City Police, and we are just going to tell a classic Batman story. There's only really one thing in this movie that we need to establish, and that is that Jim Gordon has a daughter named Barbara, and that's it. We just need to establish that Barbara Gordon exists in this universe. And then we want to focus on the type of movie we want this to be. We don't want to make this some great, awesome superhero movie about Batman saving the world or anything like that. No, this is a crime movie. It would just be something along the lines of like a murder mystery with Clayface or something. But we would want to play up the fact that Batman is really smart, that he's a detective, and we are going to play up how cool the character is. We could also have moments in the film. You would also have to have a scene that could be a mandate from higher up. Like if I was in charge of all of this, I would have a mandate to the director. There has to be a scene where Batman is beating up some criminals and he takes one of their guns and he throws it away and he said, I don't like guns and I don't use guns. You could also have a scene towards the end of the movie where Clayface or whoever the villain is 
realizes he's going to get caught and going to end up in jail, start screaming. He's like, no, I don't want to go there. And he begs Batman to just kill him because he'd rather die and go live in prison for the rest of his life. And Batman looks at him and he says, I don't kill. And he ties him up and he leaves. During the movie, there would have to be a thing when Batman is on his back computer, and on the computer you would see files for Wonder Woman, Superman, Flash, and Aquaman, and other characters that we have not even seen yet, like Green Lantern. You don't go into the files like they did in Batman vs. Superman, and you're trying to show off all the characters like cameos in the movie. You don't do any of that nonsense. You're just establishing that Batman is so paranoid that he has files on every single other superhero in the universe, even ones that we have not seen. I do want to establish another rule. We will establish that the Joker exists in this universe, such as Batman and Gordon referencing the Joker, but we don't use him yet. We are saving the Joker for a Batman movie further down the line. There is no reason to use Batman's most iconic villain this early in his story. So yeah, the Batman movie would just be a crime movie. Personally, I would have Clayface be the villain because I think he's great for like a murder mystery kind of story. But in case you haven't noticed, if I was in charge of the DC Cinematic Universe, I would want to give the director a lot of power. There are a couple of things in each movie that I would want done, and a certain direction I would want to put the whole universe in, but overall I would try to let the director tell their own story while also building toward one movie, much like how all the Marvel movies led up to Avengers Infinity. Because with the Marvel movies, it was almost like each solo movie was an individual book, like a Spider-Man book, an Iron Man book, a Doctor Strange book, a Captain America book, and then you had the team-up books, so like Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy, and over time you built up to one awesome event book. Like Infinity War was basically a live-action comic event, so that's basically what it was. And that's what all of these movies in the DC Cinematic Universe should lead up to as well, because that's not copying Marvel. It's just doing a live-action version of something comic books that both DC and Marvel have been doing for decades. As for the post credit scene, it would literally just be a scene from the next movie, which is going to be a Green Lantern movie. It would just be a Green Lantern ship crashing on Earth, and the Green Lantern sending off his ring to go find somebody else to wield it. The scene would end with the ring just flying through the sky and then cut to black. That's right, we're doing a team-up movie before Justice League. We are doing Batman and Superman World Finest. That's right, we're doing a Batman Superman team-up movie with the title being named after the old classic comic book series, the Batman and Superman World Finest. There would be a fight between Batman and Superman in this, but it would be very brief. It wouldn't even really be a fight, but more of a confrontation where they get off on the wrong foot. They fight for maybe two minutes before Batman holds up his hand and tells Superman to stop, but instead he says the name Clark, revealing he knows that Superman and Clark Kent and then they begin to talk and they work everything out. But basically, a rough idea of the plot I would have for this movie, because this would be one of those movies where I would give the director like an idea of the story I want them to tell. I would give them a basic outline that I'm about to tell you guys. Basically, Amazo had stolen all of Superman's powers and had left the Metropolis and gone to Gotham, hoping to take over the city because all that's there is Batman and he has all Superman power. And even then, because Batman had never teamed up with any of the other superheroes so far, he's very unknown. Nobody even really knows that Batman is real. They're just rumored about him. So Amazo just goes there having no idea that Batman actually exists. So that's why they're in the same city, because Superman tracked Amazo to Gotham. Batman would be nothing like the Batman in the DCEU who like wants to form a team and it's all about teamwork. He would be like, Superman, screw off, get out of my city, I will deal with 
a maid though, I work alone. And the movie would basically be about Batman and Superman learning to get along with each other. Batman and Superman would both try to defeat a maid though on their own, but it wouldn't work, so eventually they would team up and they would defeat a maid though. Then we would have a scene of Batman and Superman standing on the rooftops of Gotham, they're talking, they like shake hands and stuff, and like Superman is like, hey, you want to get lunch or something? And Bruce Wayne is like, it's like, absolutely not, no way in hell. So Superman leaves, and then the movie ends with Batman smirking, saying, heh, he's not as bad as I thought. The post credit scene would be a Batman on the rooftop, he had just defeated some criminals, and he looks up in the air. There's a the wind is blowing, like there's a storm going on, like there's a tornado, and he looks up, and there's a light shining on him, and he says, oh my god. And then it ends. It ends right there. The next movie would be a Hal Jordan origin movie. And there would be a rule in this movie, which is no romance. It is very important that every single viewer leaves this movie thinking Green Lantern is cool. The Green Lantern movie released in 2011 with Ryan Reynolds was so bad, Deadpool made fun of it. Green Lantern is a space cop with a green power ring that makes green energy construct of whatever he's imagining in his head that has a weakness to the color in yellow. Did I mention he's a space cop with a magic green ring that is considered the greatest piece of technology in the universe and the strongest weapon ever? So have fun with that concept. He's a space cop. There's a lot you can do with that and just have fun with it. Tell an origin with Green Lantern and just have fun. Fun with it. However, you do need to establish that the White Martians exist and that the White Martians are planning an invasion of Earth. Hal could learn about this in any number of ways. Even during a fight with the final villain, the villain could just reveal that he knows that the White Martians are planning this. So then Hal Jordan, after defeating the villain, would go to Mars and attempt to stop the White Martians. So it would be defeated, and it would be revealed that there's a ship that has already arrived at Earth. It's a small force, I'm not to say conquer a city, but it, it is there to test how strong Earth is. Green Lantern panicked, but he is quickly captured by the White Martians and taken prisoner. The post credit scene has no talking, it's just Batman looking up at an alien spaceship that has arrived in Gotham. It is meant to very clearly be a continuation of the post credit scene from the last movie, Batman Superman World's Finest. Now that we're done with all the solo movies and we've done a World's Finest movie, you think it would be time to do Justice League, right? Well, it isn't. The last Justice League movie was a bomb, and we are going to make people wait for it. Now it's time for the first ever live-action Trinity movie. The Trinity movie, much like the Batman Superman movie, would just be Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman coming together and trying to fight off the White Martian army. Basically, the White Martians are trying to take over Gotham and see what the defenses of the city are like, so they can try to get an idea of what the weapons on Earth are like. So, Superman and Wonder Woman would arrive, and shortly after they arrived, the White Martians would do something that created like a force field around the city or something that makes it so nobody can leave or enter the city. That would be our explanation for why there were no other characters like Aquaman and Flash helping. And then it's just a fun Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman team-up movie. However, they barely managed to defeat the White Martian. But after they defeat the White Martian and send them packing, the Martians decide to go attack with their full force, and they're going to come with a full-scale army. And Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman know that, so Superman and Wonder Woman look at each other and decide they need to form a team with other heroes around the world, because there's no way they can stop an army even bigger than what was attacking Gotham. Superman and Wonder Woman agree to form an official team in the form of the Justice League, and agree to go try to track down people like Flash and Aquaman, and Batman says he wants nothing to do with it. He doesn't join teams, he doesn't work with other people. The only reason he worked with the two of them because it was convenient and they were stuck in his city. And then he gets them a Batmobile and he leaves. One of the major conflicts of the movie would be that Wonder Woman does not like Batman. 
she doesn't like his methods as we established way earlier back in the Wonder Woman movie, and she doesn't like the way he acts and talks to her. He doesn't like his whole I work alone, you're all beneath me, I don't need you attitude. So you could even maybe have a Wonder Woman Batman fight where they had the brief fight before Superman breaks it up. You could have Wonder Woman and Superman not get along the best. You could have them argue a little bit. There definitely would have to be tension between the characters, but at the end of the movie, they would come together as the Trinity and defeat the army. The post credit scene would be Bruce Wayne contacting Batman and Superman and telling them that while he wants nothing to do with them, he thought they would like to know that he figured out how long ago the aliens arrived, telling them that they have one week until the army arrives. And Superman and Wonder Woman would look at each other and they would split up, flying in opposite directions. Wonder Woman going to meet Aquaman, and Superman going to meet Black. And then, the movie would end, and we would be ready to pick off right from there, in the next movie, the movie we've been building to all this time, Justice. Justice League would not be about the villain. In fact, I would have the director make the villain as bland as possible. We don't want some super complex villain for Justice League. The villain should definitely not be like Thanos. We don't want him taking any spotlight away from our heroes. This movie is about the Justice League and them coming together as a team. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman have already worked together, so they're good, so we don't need to focus on them. So we focus on everybody coming together and really learning to work together. But first we need to bring in Flash and Aquaman. Now Wonder Woman should deal with Aquaman. Hands down, she's an Atlantean, she's an Amazonian, they should deal with each other. You could have a lot of interesting scenes of Aquaman being like, Oh damn, you left the island. This is bad. Or he could also say something like an Amazonian woman asking an Atlantean man for help means it's serious. Of course I'll help. Remember, these guys like being heroes and they should all be immediately interested in at least finding out what's going to happen so they can better protect the world. Superman could deal with Flash. Um, I would not make Flash as funny as he is in the original one. I did like Flash in it, but the Flash we're dealing with is Barry Allen. We're dealing with the same version of the Flash. And to be completely honest with you, that was not Barry Allen. That was obviously Wally West's personality, but just on the character of Barry Allen because of the TV show and Barry Allen being more well-known, right? You could even have Superman and Flash race to see how fast Flash is and all of that. But basically, then everybody meets up in Metropolis after they all finally get each other to join up. They all go to Metropolis and they meet up. And somebody, maybe Flash, could just ask about Batman. And Superman could be like, he won't come. He works alone. There could be scenes of Alfred trying to convince Batman to go. And eventually, after like half the movie passed, like, while they're recruiting people and getting ready for the attack. Maybe you could even have the other Justice League members training. You know, that's actually a really good idea. All the other members can train together while Alfred tried to convince Batman to go. And then they all go to Metropolis. They start fighting off the alien invasion there because that's where the main mothership is. So they're fighting off the alien invasion. And then when they get into a pinch, Batman shows up and he starts giving out orders and forming a strategy. And they all work together to defeat the aliens. However, one of the aliens does mention that they were actually ordered to do this by somebody else. Somebody else commissioned them to go to Earth, and they were only a test to see how powerful Earth really was. Batman would interrogate the White Martian and try to find out where he was from, who gave the order, and what was going on. And all the alien would say is, Apocalypse. Hinting to Dark Side, and that's it. We don't mention it any further. And the post credit scene would just be a young boy eating in like a van area with his parents, and you would just cut to their chair, which have circus uniforms on the back, hinting to Robin. So yes, that is how I would do all the DC movies instead of a Justice League movie. But now the question, what would I do after that? Now I'm not going to go into super great detail, but I just want to tell you what the overall end goal would be for this universe to end with, much like how Marvel's end goal for like 10 years was Avengers Infinity War. Well, the end goal would be without question a movie where Darkseid and his forces come to Earth 
and invade it, and all the heroes had to fight them off. Now, over the course of the next, like, ten movies, I would do three phases, just like the MCU. So all of that we just did, that would have been phase one. Phase two would have been another Green Lantern, another Superman, another Flash movie, and another Aquaman movie. Just more solo movies. However, there would not be a Batman 2. No, we would have a Batman and Robin movie that introduced Robin. And then, after doing a couple more solo movies with other Justice League characters, we would do a Teen Titans movie, where Robin forms the classic Teen Titans from the original TV show from the 2000s, with Raven, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Starfire. So he would form that team after the Batman and Robin movie and all the other solo movies. Then after the Teen Titans movie, we would take up a bit of a risk, we would do a Supergirl movie with Superman in it. It would just be the origin of Supergirl, her crash landing on Earth, her learning that her powers, her going to school and trying to deal with her powers, and her becoming a well-known superhero. It would kind of be like the DC EU Spider-Man Homecoming. It would be about a young hero that doesn't know what she's doing, and just the ride on this crazy new world that is surrounded by all these really powerful people, and you would establish that she may or may not be stronger than Superman, but we don't know because he's not experienced enough to ask. After the Supergirl movie, you would do another Justice League movie that would just be a fun movie. Maybe they could fight Amazo again, but this time he has the powers of the entire Justice League. I'm not sure, but you could just have fun with it. This is just the movie where you get to create the bonds of the characters that make the Justice League be the Justice League. Then you would do the third wave of solo movies, like a Batman 3, a Flash 3, an Aquaman 3, a Green Lantern 3. Batman 3 would introduce Batgirl, as we established way back in the Batman movie, Barbara Gordon does exist, so Batman 3 could have Batgirl in it. Batman 3 could also be the movie where we finally did the Joker. That would be the best place, in my opinion, to do it. Go out with a bang, have the final Batman movie in the Batman trilogy be a Joker movie. You would keep doing solo movies, and then eventually you would do a Teen Titans 2, where Supergirl could join the Teen Titans. I think that would just be an interesting little thing to do, and I don't think it's ever really been done in the comics, so it would also be something new for everybody. Like, nobody has ever really seen Supergirl work together with, like, Beast Boy and Starfire. So it would be interesting for even comic book fans to see a comic-accurate version of Supergirl interact and be a member of the Teen Titans. And then after you've done the two Teen Titans movies and three rounds of solo movies for all the Justice League members, then you just do the Dark Side movie. Dark Side comes to Earth, all the characters team up and they fight Dark Side, and you just tell a really, really cool story with it. But you have a single point you're building throughout, throughout this entire thing. The first phase of movie is just building to Justice League. But then after Justice League, you start building to Dark Side. And after that, if the franchise is successful, you have Flashpoint, which you can just adapt and use it as an excuse to change out all the actors that want to leave. And you can really continue it for another, like, decade or two. It's fantastic, and I think this is a pretty good plan. Just build everything up to Dark Side, like the MCU built everything up to Thanos, because that's just building up to a major comic event. It's something comic books have been doing for decades, and I think it worked really well for Marvel, so I don't see why DC can't do it. So yeah, I know I kind of started to rush a little bit at the end, but I just wanted to just quickly skim over the overall plan from Justice League to the final movie with Dark Side, because to be completely honest, at this point, I would kind of just be repeating the key points that went over with the first movies. Because basically, you've got to make a sequel to all the movies I just described, and add on a two Teen Titans movies and a Supergirl movie. That's all you need to do, is just do sequels and introduce more characters. That's all the movies need to do, and honestly, I feel like I'd be wasting your time and mine if I went into great detail and spent another 20 minutes on each phase. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me how you would do with DC Cinematic Universe in the comments section down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is Nerking101, 